Well, we want to continue with the anxiety disorders. And this time, we want to look at generalized anxiety disorder. What are the clinical features of generalized anxiety disorders? They, we want to divide them into physical, psychological, and the others. So the physical, psych, physical symptoms include, um, and we are doing this under the various systems. So in the cardiovascular system, we have tachycardia, we have palpitations, we have fainting feelings. In the gastrointestinal system, we have difficulty swallowing. We have barbarygmi. We have loose bowels. We have constipation. In the central nervous system, we have blood vision. We have dizziness. We have prickling sensation. In the musculoskeletal system, we have muscular pain and grinding of teeth. In the reproductive system, we have amenorrhea. We have loss of erection. We have impotence. In the genital urinary system, we have frequency of urination. In the integumentary system, we have sweating, we have generalized sweating, and other symptoms include dry mouth, difficulty in falling to sleep, and fatigability. The psychological systems include worrying thoughts, feelings of despair, anticipation of something worse to happen. The patient becomes so irritable. Intellectually, there's difficulty in concentration, there's poor memory, and there is also confusion. How does an anxious patient appear? Readiness to tears, inability to relax. There are also behavioral signs such as frequent nail biting, loss of sexual desire, teeth grinding, lack of communication, decreased productivity, increased consumption of alcohol or tobacco. How do we manage anxiety disorders? Physical care. Severe cases of anxiety disorder, example generalized anxiety disorder, may require admission to the ward. The nurse has a responsibility to provide or collaborate with other health professionals in meeting the physical care needs of the patient. The anxious patient may have difficulty in sleeping. The importance of sleep and rest must be explained to the patient and family. Physical and mental rest must be provided. Remove patient from stress-producing situation. Care for patient in a quiet environment with less external stimulus to reduce feeling of tension and ensure rest and sleep. Establish rapport to facilitate nursing care. Reassure patient and family to allay anxiety and doubts. Remain with patient during the acute phase to prevent patient feeling isolated. Initiate and maintain therapeutic nurse-patient relation. Provide a safe and secure environment to ensure patient of, high, of his safety Prevent injury from restlessness and possible sedation. Remain calm and avoid being anxious yourself. Intake and output to monitor fluid and electrolyte balance. Daily weighing in the initial stages to monitor improvement in nutritional status. Eliminate body waste. Nurse educates patients. Nurse educates patients. The GIT disturbance may be due to anxiety. Communicate effectively that is, nurse provides clear and simple information. Observe and record accurately patient's blood pressure, pulse, and respiration, and report deviations from baseline data to immediate supervisor or physician. Speak in short, simple sentences. Encourage verbalization of feelings. Listen to patient's concerns, but do not respond emotionally or pass judgment on the behavior. Administer anxiolytics as prescribed. Example, diazepam, Librum, Lorazepam. If there's pain, give analgesics. Psychological care of individuals suffering from anxiety disorders. Do systematic desensitization. Give a therapeutic touch. Massage is also very important and sometimes exercises. Do behavior modification therapy. Give group therapy. Give family therapy. Give occupational therapy. Give recreational therapy and sometimes use flooding. When you are using flooding, use this with caution, especially in phobia. And sometimes implosion is also done. Perhaps I have to stop here and explain what we mean by flooding, implosion, and desensitization. In anxiety disorders such as phobias, we use desensitization very much. And um, in desensitization, you uh, the, 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 the feared object, if it's a snake or even if it's a cat, what you do in desensitization is that you tell stories of cats to the 
individual who is afraid of the cat. Then later you bring pictures and sometimes you show films of cats to the individual and then later you expose the individual to a physical cat. And that is what we mean by systematic desensitization. In flooding, what we do in flooding is that, and this one must be used with care. I'm using the same example again here, fear of cat. If an individual fears cat, instead of using desensitization, we flood the patient. But in this case, we bring the cat, the feared object, to the individual immediately. And that is why in this one you have to be very careful when you are doing it. The other one is implosion. And implosion we, is just like flooding, but we let the individual imagine uh, the feared object. So that has to do with desensitization, flooding, and implosion. So these are the references that you need to look at as far as the anxiety disorders are concerned. Thank you.